Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about my journey to sustainable health and meaningful success. If you're coming back and you've already subscribed, welcome back. Y'all are my people and I love you so much. And if you're new, I hope you consider subscribing by the end of this video. This is part three of Call Me Fanatical by Larry Winters. We're jumping right back into the reaction. I will link part one and two in the description below. When I did pour people in, when I did pour into people and they quit, they lost. I didn't. Because along the way, I learned a spiritual principle. You know what the spiritual principle is? You can't outgive God. And when you're doing this business with the right heart, with the right intentions, for the right cause, and the right purpose, you are giving. You are serving. You are giving. You are serving. So I've had people get up to the 4,000 PV level, dozens if not hundreds of hours. They quit. They have a job. I'm free. I'm financially independent. And God says, if you give, you'll get. If you sow, you will reap. And it may not come up out of that quitter, but it's going to be coming up in another blessing, like having an Andy and Marine Helzer tie in your business, and are two of the biggest blessings on the earth. To, to have a Brian and Joe Matacola tie in your business. How about this? God says, okay, you worked with that guy. He went to platinum, and he got blown out by a negative wife or a stupid boss. You poured into that guy for three, five years. Yeah, man, I only have so much time in my life. You got to build this thing on faith. You gotta have some faith. Some of you guys are so technical and you're so analytical and you're so stinking robotic. You're gonna be doing this for a long time. You're gonna be working, you're gonna be going diamond a long time. Man, everything I did, I was blessed. Everything I did, I learned. Everything I did, I felt good about myself. I mean, I'll help anybody who wants to build this thing and quit. You wanna build this thing and quit? Fine. And I'm gonna give you everything I got every single time I'm with you to the day you disappear. Because I'm not going to lose. My God shall supply all my needs according to the glory through Christ Jesus. I'm going to win. I sow, I reap. I give, I get. Period. And when you look at, well, I did that and it didn't produce anything, you're looking in the scene. You have to look in the unseen. It's called faith. It's called... Ah, uh, my blood is boiling. My blood is boiling. I know I've already gone on this whole rant about how you did it for your father in heaven when everything that you've talked about this entire audio has just been about material possessions and growing your wealth on earth so that you can rub it in other people's faces and all of the things that you're sacrificing for other people you're sowing into other people you're building into other people and you're you're pouring into them and it's all to build your business to build your wealth and this whole concept of you can't outgive God that when you pour into somebody and you're you're sowing your time into someone um, who will eventually quit the business, then that is gonna you know you're looking into the scene and you need to look into the unseen. You need to you know have faith that God is going to provide all your needs. You know what? Here's the thing. I I I'm just calling bullshit on that. I'm calling bullshit on that. I understand that some people have, have prayed and had their rent taken care of miraculously or have prayed and had people healed miraculously. I do not and I never have claimed to know how miracles work. I do understand that sometimes that happens, but you cannot look someone in the face who is struggling month to month who has been nothing but faithful. You can't look into the eyes of someone in a third world country struggling just to survive, doesn't have a home, doesn't have food, doesn't have anything, rife with so many diseases, but you're going to pour into somebody and go to meetings and talk about how wealthy you are and brag about your no job license plate and, and how you're going to pour your time into all of these people. And, you know, you have so much time because you don't have a job and you have a big cushy house and you're going to you're going to be able to say that even if that person doesn't get in, my God will supply all my needs and you can't outgive God and God's going to give you even more than what you put into your business. You can't look someone in the face and say that when they're just struggling to survive. It is absolutely insane. And this isn't just an Amway thing. This is a Christianity thing where faith has to extend beyond wealth because the world is not meant to be where you amass all of your wealth and you're, and you're just living on top and God doesn't care about all the people on the bottom who are just scraping by or who are actually dying of disease and starvation. You cannot believe if if you believe in a God who does not care about the third world country, you know, people or, or just people who are struggling in any capacity 
and you just think that you can't outgive God because everything that you do, God just showers upon you all these blessings and everything, and and how you've just unlocked the secret to to heavenly wealth, and it, it just it's just complete bullshit. It's complete bullshit, and and this is just such a false gospel. Like I said, I didn't really mean to to get into like the whole religious aspect of anything. And I'm not trying to preach at you. And if you don't believe in Christianity or you don't believe in God, you know, I'm not trying to like sway anybody. I'm just strictly, if you go off of the Bible and you look at God as represented in the Bible, God never talks about how he wants to just bestow upon his people all the wealth on earth. He never talks about that. In fact, Jesus even acknowledged the poor will always be with you. You will always have poor people. And that's just, that is one of the realities of life. That's the reality of the world. And it's really unfortunate. That's it. And I'm not, you could go into whole like theological debates on whether or not God intended for people to suffer on earth. I don't believe that. I believe that the world is imperfect because we have a choice between love and the alternative of love. God is love, but other people choose the alternative of love, which is hatred and discord and jealousy, fits of rage, all of these different wars and, you know, oppression. And that's what other people choose because love is a choice. So because love is a choice, we live in a world where other people don't choose love and we, and, and, and the world is just therefore not only sunshine and roses. It's it's just not. That's not how the world is. So I choose love, but that doesn't mean that God's just gonna all of a sudden rain down on me all of these all of these subscribers and all of these you know things like that. It, it the, the, this is stuff that I have to work for, and there's no yeah the sowing and reaping concept is a general principle of when you work for something, you will achieve it. I have faith, I guess, that eventually I'm going to have, you know, a ton of subscribers. I had faith when I started this that I was eventually going to get 400 subscribers, but because I was willing to put the, the work into it. So it's, you know, in that sense, you have faith because you've actually done the works. But to say that you can't outgive God and, and talk about how you spend $37 on a pizza and and talk about how great your God is and, and how much he just wants to bestow riches on you and not and 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 completely disregard all of the people who are suffering. It's just that doesn't fly. And that's not the God. We, we definitely do not serve the same God if that's the God you're talking about. I think you're talking about a different God, because like we said before, at the beginning of this audio, you can't serve two masters. So we've kind of kind of established you can you can only serve God or serve money because you can't serve both. So he's talking about how you can't outgive God, but the majority of his talk has been about how much money he has and how much money he has helped other people get or whatever. I I think it's very clear what master he serves. Oh, faith. Now, if you don't have any faith, you better have a really good work ethic. You don't have any faith, you better have a real, you better really filter people good. You better filter them. You, they better have a resume. They better, be, man, you better take, you better take nine months bringing the babies on board. Because when you don't have any faith, you're going to have a limited amount of energy and time to pour into somebody. And if you're afraid the whole time, I'm going to pour and I'm going to quit. If you don't have any faith, you better have a really good work ethic. You better be really committed. You better be really dedicated because you're going to need it. You're going to need it big time. You can't outgive God. And when you realize that you're out there serving people, you have something good and you're offering it. And I understand the interview process better than anybody in this room. I'll say it again. I understand the interview process better than anybody in this room. Period. Because for six years I didn't have it. I don't know why God gave it to me through Gary. I don't know why Gary spent the time teaching me. I was cross line and LOA. I know why, but it was like manna from heaven. It was like water to a dying man in the desert. 
my gosh, we started interviewing people. We started setting expectations. We started getting people right, started right. We started setting out, we started doing it. And this thing exploded. But we saw people quit. People quit at every single level. People quit in every endeavor. People quit baseball. They quit football. They quit the ministry. People quit your job. They, people quit Amway. They quit. But when you are, but when you approach this business, that I am going to negotiate the price of success. I'm only willing to talk to so many people. I'm only willing to pour my life into so many people. And, and, and if I pour my life into people who don't want to win bad enough and they go away, I'm only willing to do that so many times. So I'm going to have to make sure that I bring in almost perfect people, almost people who pass my test. I understand the interview process, but see, when you have a, a mentality of I'm negotiating, I'm only going to talk to so many people, I'm only going to serve so many people, I'm only going to help so many people, and if I don't get to a certain point, then it's not going to be worth it. I read a book called Think and Grow Rich that you cannot, you cannot, you can never, ever negotiate the price of success. So when I read that secular term from Napoleon Hill, that you can't negotiate the price of success. And then I found in the word of God, the inerrant word of God, you can't outgive God, that anything you sow, you reap. Whatever you, whatever you give, you get. Nothing is loose from heaven until it's first loosed on earth. So you know what I became? I became a rag picker from Ogmandino. I became Johnny Appleseed. And I just started throwing seeds, baby. Who wants to talk to me about Amway? Who wants to see what I'm putting together? I'm throwing seed. And I found a guy, and I helped him get to 4,000. He blew out. Have a nice day. Enjoy your job. I'm still serving. Why? Because you can't outgive God. It's called faith. I'm speechless. To say that you can't negotiate the price of success and that you can't outgive God. This is the kind of mentality that keeps people in to a point where even if they've seen that none of their work has amounted to anything in the Amway business, that they will still continue to give because you can't negotiate the price of success and you can't outgive God. So therefore, they think that they just need to continue down the same path. It's like the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. That's a quote from someone I still don't know who that's by. It's not my original thought, though. But... Um, yeah, it, like they, they'll continue the insanity of pouring their lives into Amway in order to not negotiate the price of success when it's like, no, you have to know where your boundaries are. You have to know when it is to call it quits and to know when when it's like this didn't work for you like it doesn't work for 99 percent or more than 99 percent of people who do this it just it blows my mind just to think of how many people have wasted so many years i, I know i sound like a broken record but it just this is an, it's infuriating the kind of prosperity gospel the kind of you know that you're pouring your life into someone no, you're not. You're not. Who you're pouring your life into is your upline, who will continue to say, just continue to give, because if you just give and give and give and don't, you know, negotiate the price of success, that then you'll, you'll succeed eventually, because God wants you to un unleash on earth before it can be unleashed in heaven. What kind of bullshit is that? It's just ridiculous. I, I, I just, I'm like, it's heartbreaking. It's just really infuriating. I, I don't even know how to react to that because it's just so false. It's just so false. And it, it, that kind of mentality has ruined lives. And it's why people are still in Amway. It's why people are still in LTD. They still think that what they're doing is noble, noble and serving God. And they still think that God's going to bless them for their efforts in Amway. And you know what? Here's the thing. And I, I mentioned this the last, um, the last video I made. That, uh, you know, you do, if you do sow in something that is ultimately a bust, you know, you, you sow your time and you sow your energy and your money into something like Amway and it doesn't work out for you, you will eventually reap benefits outside of that. But you have to be open for movement. You have to be open to change and to learn that something isn't actually the path that you were supposed to go on. Or maybe, 
maybe you were supposed to go on that path for a certain amount of time to learn the lessons that you needed to learn, but then, but then get off the stinking path if it's not working for you. Nowhere, God doesn't say that in the Bible. Like the Bible doesn't contain anything about Amway or contain anything about wealth. The Bible does. I mean, the Bible contains a lot about wealth, but it's nothing. It's nothing of what Larry Winters has been talking about. The Bible contains a, a definition of faith. It's Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And that's supposed to be in reference to hope and love and God <laughs> and the fact that we have a future and that the world sucks, but eventually things will be made right and, and that we do have a hope that eventually we will see justice. That's faith. What this man is talking about, faith being sure of what we hope for, certain of what we do not see, being money that you're going to receive from Amway eventually, once you've poured enough of your life and your time and all of your family time down the drain, it's, it's just, it's a lie. It's a lie. That's not what faith is. It's not what faith is. Uh, man, he's just so off base. He's preaching to so many people. Thousands of people have heard this audio and it's just so false. And how many people have made huge decisions and, and even like spiritual decisions based on this kind of counsel? That's, it's poison. And when you follow and duplicate people who have minimum faith, good luck. Good luck. You're going to need it. I learned how Amway works. I studied this thing. I became a student. And then I learned how he worked, my Heavenly Father. Because there's secular laws and rules that can't be broken. And then there's spiritual laws that can't be broken. And when I first got in, I only had the secular side. And then over a period of time, I started learning how the secular part of Amway worked, the business side, the width, the depth, the PV checks, the platinum, the qualification, qualify, stabilize, and, 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 and solidify. I started learning that from John Crow and Bill and all the leaders. And then over here, I started studying how God operated, God's principle. I started studying all of how he, with his realm, and, and I started putting the two and two together. I started connecting the dots. Man, that works here. That fits here. And I started living it. I started walking. I started talking it. And all of a sudden, this thing started happening. You know what I found out along the way? Yeah, I'm fanatical. Still, going to be. You don't like it? Go to another meeting. I found out along the way that I'm special. I found out along the way that I'm special. But you know what? When I found out I was special, I realized you were special. When I found out that I had value, I automatically realized that you had value. And I started approaching this entire journey differently. Now, I was going to sow and give to find somebody who appreciated this opportunity like I did and they wanted to become my friend and we could journey through life together. Can I give you a tip? I loved being mentored from a distance or up close. And my act will give me a lot of love and edification about me being his mentor, mentor, mentor. But I don't see me as a mentor to my act. I see me as an equal my act and we're both walking through life together trying to do the best we can for the most number of people. I don't see me as Gary Knowles mentor. I don't see me as Mike Bundy's mentor. They're men of God. They're grown men. They've been in this thing as long as I have. I'm not mentoring Joe Markowitz. I'm not trying to mentor Joe Markowitz. You know what I'm just glad? I'm glad that we're going through life together with the same business model, the same vision, the same cause, the same purpose, and we can become unified as brothers walking together. New people need mentorship. Rookies need mentorship. But at what point in your life do you have... Mike Bundy's 60 years old. Hey, Larry, I'm thinking about buying a new Corvette. You think it's a good idea? Well, Mike, you already have three. A four's not going to hurt you. You don't have to agree with everything I'm saying. Some of y'all might think I'm fanatical. That's the goal. I learned how special I was, therefore I learned how special you were. Want Do you see how the lies and the truth are so intertwined in just that little portion of audio that it's really hard to separate those two. It's, it's the idea that, um, you know, everybody is special. Like I realized that I was special. I realized that I had giftings and a purpose and a call. And I also realized that you had that. Well, that's, I mean, that's the truth I, to some degree or another. I don't know. I mean, 
I don't, I don't know exactly how much specific of a calling we all have. You know, I don't, I don't think God, it, I don't know, I don't know. But um, in terms of like having a specific set of gifts and talents and personalities and you're, you're special in that way, yeah, that's totally true. But then he throws in the whole, you know, mentorship and, and how, you know, someone can just buy an extra Corvette and, you know, you already have three, one more isn't going to hurt you. But you did that for your father in heaven and you're a rag, rag picker. And that's, that's something that deeply injures me is that, that whole statement of um, being a rag picker is, that's from, that's a reference from um, The Greatest Miracle in the World, which is the book that eventually, like, that sold me on Amway because my upline gave me that book and it talked all about how your life is worth living. Even if your circumstances suck, your life is still a mir miracle and that you're still special and you're still worth every ounce of time and energy into living to your full potential. And that deeply spoke to me, especially in the, in the season that I was in at that time. And so that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a rag, rag picker. I wanted to be someone who can see someone like the, a diamond in the rough to quote, um, Aladdin. Um, I, I wanted to see people who were, who were of value, but didn't see themselves as value as valued. And I wanted to bring that out of them. I wanted to help people see just how special they were. But then to, to bring on that whole, you know, buy an extra Corvette and, you know, we, we did this all in, in purpose and we're all brothers and we're, we're all walking the same walk. And I don't want to see myself as a mentor or higher than anybody that I'm mentoring. But, but, but then it, it's just, you see the truth and, and, and the things that are like good and, and quality, it's like, okay, good. So you don't see yourself as higher than other people and you don't try to pump yourself up like my upline did. Um, you know, so that's, that's good. But then, you know, you get the bullshit mixed in with that. And it's, it's hard to, it's hard to differentiate and it's hard to separate those two. I'll wind down. Call me fanatical. I didn't care if you quit. I didn't, it didn't affect my success if you gave up. But how much time did you pour into people? Hundreds, if not thousands of hours and they're all gone. They're all gone. But you're not. Bundy's not. Danny's not. Campbell's not gone. Joe's not gone. Alan's not gone, Doug's not gone, Jake's not gone, Brian McGrath's not gone, Gary's not gone, my ex's not gone. Who do you want me to name? You don't need everybody on your team. You need a handful of winners on your team. And I'll go through a bunch of losers to find another Gary Noble. I'll go through thousands. I'll spend thousands of hours with a loser, work their list, build depth, to find one more Matthew Pesamente. To find one more Stephen Winners, to find one more Ricky Winners, to find one more Zach Knoll, to find one more Rose Pesamente. Are you kidding me? That's, you know, <laughs> I never really heard it from a truth perspective. So this is actually like a revelation to me. The fact that he's naming the anecdotal stories of people who didn't quit, but how he spent thousands of hours uh, with people who eventually were losers with with people who you know countless people who didn't make it in the business you know they say that they, they actually really like say that often that there are going to be like a, a thousand to one <laughs> of people who are actually going to go diamond in this business but um but they it's always from the perspective of the recruiter so oh pardon me it's always from the perspective of a recruiter. So you only get the, I spent so much time pouring into other people and only a few gave, like actually reciprocated and only a few made it, but it was still worth it to me. But what about the thousands of people that you poured into who also poured into this business and who also desperately tried to make this work? How about those thousands of people who spent, you know, half a month's income on this business and and tried to, you know, 
do the whole dumpster mentality, but ended up quitting because they couldn't sustain that kind of lifestyle where they're not getting the medical treatment they need, they're not getting the nutrition they need, and they're not spending time with the people that they love, people who might have a very limited time on this earth. And so they're, they're spending time with the people that they love and, and, and that's who they call losers. That's who Larry Winters calls losers are the people who didn't make it for one reason or another. But he's mentioning all these thousands of people that he poured his time into and that never amounted to anything. But that's the whole point is that thousands of people try to do MLMs and it never amounts to anything. But there's a handful of anecdotal stories that he can pull from that that actually made it. But he spent thousands of hours with other people who didn't make it. You know what I mean? I feel like I kind of went in a couple circles trying to make that point. But the point, I believe, has landed. Some of y'all are trying to avoid the work. Some of y'all are trying to avoid it. I don't want to sow into people if they're going to give up. Here's a tip. Part of the program. Choose a different career if you don't like it. It's called sowing and reaping. It's called giving. You can call me fanatical. Got in in 1980, 24 years old. Went platinum in 86, ruby in 87, emerald in 1989. Six months after we were emerald, I had a choice. Keep doing Amway and lawn care or just do Amway. After six months at emerald, I gave up my lawn care business. I sold it to a downline, and I got my little car, and I drove down to Greensboro, North Carolina to a plant. There was no party. There was no balloons. There was no freedom party. There was, there was, there was no cake. There was nobody cheering. I just sold my lawn care business, and now my sole source of income was this. I did the plan that night, didn't even tell anybody what happened. I didn't say, hey, by the way, I'm free. Figured they'd figure it out after a while when I didn't see me doing anything else. Next morning, I woke up. <sighs> 32 years young. No job. No job. There was a guy in Raleigh who was one of my heroes. He was in the business. He built a double diamond. He was one of my heroes. Still is a bit to a degree. His name was Mickey. And I saw Mickey would walk around on stage almost every conference. Ain't got no job. Ain't got no job. Ain't got no job. No job. Mickey ain't got no job. And he'd be up there for 45 minutes and about half of it he'd be singing. Ain't got no job. I used to be an English school teacher, then little high school, ain't got no job. And he planted a seed in a little boy's mind named Larry Winters. But one day I didn't have to have a job. And I could use this awesome, amazing vehicle and the system I was a part of and the system I'm a part of now. And I could take those two opportunities and sell out. I could become fanatical. I bought 30, 40 years of my life back from doing a stupid job for trading hours for dollars. And see, some of you go, well, yeah, we were car wash, man, you were selling cars, you were doing lawn care, no wonder you didn't like it. Hey, I was trading hours for dollars. 99% of you might have a much higher income, but you're still trading hours for dollars. And if you're trading hours for dollars, you have temporary income, my friend. Period, case closed, there's no debate. And if you want to risk your entire future on temporary income, somebody else signing a check, somebody else paying your bills, good for you. I didn't want to risk that, not in this world. So here's what I did. I partnered with Amway, I partnered with LTD, I partnered with my Heavenly Father. And I partnered with some really good IBOs who did not quit, that would not quit. We built an army of people. And now leg one so big that it's going to be willed to my kids. Leg two so big it can't fall back, not that I can comprehend. Leg three is massive and getting bigger. And leg four is here tonight and it's huge. Leg five and six are going diamond, the Perez team and the winner's team too. You kidding me? We're going to have 100,000 people through six diamond legs here very soon, gang. Yeah, you can call me fanatical. We gave when we didn't have. We sowed when we didn't have the means in total faith. And I knew I was going to find some winners. So I'm going to close with this. You can call me fanatical. But you can't call me at work. You can call me fanatical, but you can't call me an employee. You can call me fanatical, but you can't call me a quitter. And you can call me fanatical, 
but you can't call me broke. IBOs only, not for use with prospects. The success depicted in this profile may reflect income from sources other than Amway, such as earnings from the sale of training and education materials, or other businesses and investments. While the techniques and approaches suggested have worked for others, no one can guarantee that these techniques and approaches will work for you. In addition, we want to emphasize that success in this business does not come without hard work. I'm dead inside. <laughs> so he's talking about how, you know, employment is the worst thing. Employment is something that God wants to partner with you to get out of. God wants to partner with you so that you cannot have temporary income, temporary income. God wants to partner with you on that. He partnered with his upline. He partnered with the system and he could achieve passive income. And if you're, you know, ready and, and willing to settle for temporary income or active income, then you know, then that's, that's your loser mind not wanting to partner with God for that kind of stuff. It's just, it's ridiculous. It makes me really angry. This whole audio is sickening to listen to because he, because he makes himself out to be someone who is wanting to pour into other people, who wants to change other people's lives, who wants to be a rag picker and let people know how much their worth and how special they are. But what he really just wants is to grow his own empire. He wants to grow his business and that's it. Uh, anyway, I, I've said all that I can say about this audio. Please leave in the comments below if I missed anything. Obviously, it's an hour worth of audio, so um, I bet I probably didn't say all the things that could be said about the kind of deception that he says. Um, I, I'm sorry if I got too preachy for you. Um, I'm not trying to evangelize or anything like that. I mean, I think that faith is being certain of what we hope for and and sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see in terms of hope and love and goodness. That's what faith is. Faith is faith in God and God is love. That's all I can that's all I can say and I would hope that people choose love over the alternative. But some people, like Larry Winters, have chosen money and the love of money over the true God that is sp spoken about in the Bible. And there's just so much um, that you could say uh, uh, biblically, s strictly biblically, about what he said that just makes it so theologically or, or biblically inaccurate. And it just makes it really dangerous for the people who participate in, in this kind of stuff. He talks about how he doesn't want to be a quitter and he didn't negotiate the price of success. Whereas the entire last video that I made prior to this series was about knowing your boundaries and knowing when to cut your losses. Because to think that you're just going to follow this one path until success, um, it, it just... It's so dangerous. It's just so dangerous to sell your whole life and to, to settle your entire, everything that you've built your life on off of the word of these people who just make money from you. They make money off of you. That's why they don't want you to quit. That's why they want to like pour all their time into you is because they don't want you to quit because then their income would be affected. And clearly what we've seen from this audio is money is their God. That's what they worship. That's what they prioritize over everything else. So yeah, you're going to get someone to, to make themselves seem like they care about you so much because they're serving God, which is money. And they know that if as long as you stay in, as long as you continue buying your products, because the Amway business to them is not meant to be selling products, then yeah, then you're going to continue giving money to them. And, and that's the sad reality of it. I hope that this audio kind of brings a lot of light to, to um, <laughs> the mentality that a lot of Amway people have, and especially Amway LTD. I, and even just listening to the audio, I thought I had a lot to react to, and now actually in the process of reacting to it, it's just... 
my stomach is sick. I'm, I'm sickened. I'm sickened by all of this. So anyway, I love you guys so much. Uh, tune in next Sunday for more health content. Next Wednesday um, for more anti-MLM stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye.